Hey guys, it's Danny, and no, no, you're not dreaming. This is a box full of orchids. It's a haul! Can you believe it? Yeah, it's my very first haul in a year and a bit. Anyway, it's a birthday haul. Now, I have to tell you, I had an option for this birthday. It was either a new phone or orchids. But All Faithful here is still alive and kicking, even with a cracked screen. And so, this is the consequence of my decision. Let's dig in. So, these orchids are coming from a nursery I never ordered before, and this is the orchid garden in Poland. And there are 16 orchids in here. I'm really curious to see how everything looks. So, as you can see, lots of paper. And that is good. Oh. And I also have some sort of foam. In any case, like I usually do, you will have the link towards this nursery in the description below if you're interested to learn more. But I have to say the transport was super fast because I had options of transport. I chose EMS. It was a little bit more expensive, yes, but the orchids arrived lightning fast. So we will unwrap one of them just to see how it looks like and then I'll just speed up the process so I don't bore you to death. They are wrapped in paper, as you can see, very well wrapped, and I know what this is. Now, I'm not sure if I was in frame with all that filming, but this is the Odontoglossum navium. I'll have to go back and see if I filmed this. If not, this is the very first orchid. Of course, I will place a picture on the screen for you right now so you see how the flower looks like. Now, this is a near flowering size plant. You will notice that this nursery has three types of orchids. M, which is the tiniest one, it's a seedling, near flowering size, which means it's one to two years from blooming, and flowering size, which of course can bloom at any time. So as far as I remember, this is near flowering size. I'm not sure if this new growth can flower. If not this one, because of the adjusting to my environment, then the next one should bloom. Okay, next plant sadly did not really do too well on transport. It was in bloom, but sadly the flowers, yeah, no, it's this flower spike will not make it. This is what happens with transport. It's okay. This is Cygnotus aureum crossed with uh, there you go, that's the name. Now, this orchid, okay, it's, it's not in the best condition and this is because the roots are really not in a good state. But the good thing is that it's dormancy time now for Catacetum, so this guy will lose his roots. I think he's gonna be okay, but this one, yeah, he didn't fare all that well on transport, sadly. Uh, got a chance to take a look at the potential flowers and you can see right here, it has quite a nice lip, but yeah. Uh, yeah, not sure if I should induce the dormancy on this guy, cut the flower spike, uh, let the flowers drop. I think I will. I think that's what I should do. Next orchid is a seedling. Yeah, I purchased a few seedlings as well, because why the heck not? So this is the Dendrobium speciosum uh, Golden Peninsula Princess, and it's a wonderful, wonderful Dendrobium. I never saw it full size for sale, I only saw it seedling sale, so yeah, why not? I'm just gonna give it a go. It might be that due to my very warm climate, very sunny climate, the seedlings will actually develop faster than they would in a normal temperate climate, such as my older climate. So that's why I went ahead and I actually purchased just near flowering size or seedlings as well because you don't know maybe I'll have a surprise faster than I think and this guy looks pretty pretty well I have new growth here I have quite a few roots yeah looks good okay so I went ahead and unpacked everything because I just needed to put on the microphone too many times this is a phalaenopsis can you believe that this is a Phalaenopsis labkensis. You see the flower on the corner of your screen right now. It's gorgeous. This is a seedling. When this orchid matures, the leaves can be up to two meters long, so it's gonna be really funny to see how this one will evolve. Strangely enough, this Phalaenopsis requires quite a lot of light and warmth, so it should do pretty well in my environment. Next, you might recognize this, is the Rhynchostilis gigantea spots. Woo, I finally have it. Uh, one of the leaves broke in transport, that's okay. I will repot these uh, pretty, pretty fast because I have a feeling they're, they are a bit too wet in their pots, but it's looking okay. I just need to see what's going on here. Uh, but I think this is, yeah, it's ripped. It's just broken, it's not diseased or rotten or anything. Funny thing is that there are multiple varieties of the Rinko Stilis, but I kind of do like the spotted one more than anything else. I do like the orange one as well. Next, sadly, when I unwrapped everything, this guy fell out of the pot along with the medium, but anyway, I'll repot it soon. This is Dendrobium Jenkinsi crossed with Aggregatum. It's that really beautiful yellow Dendrobium. I always wanted to have one, and it's looking quite nice. Now, I don't remember if these guys are near flowering size or what i will post it on the screen just so you have an idea of the size you will be getting if you choose to ever order from this nursery and i saw a new growth somewhere I see a new growth here 
So this guy is looking pretty, as far as I know, he's not a very big guy, I might be wrong. But we'll see and we'll talk a little bit more when we repot all of these guys. Okay, this Sally has been separated from its tag, luckily I know what it is. This is again a near flowering size or a seedling or something of the sorts. Uh, I will not pronounce the name, but it's a sort of an ingrecum and it's beautiful. But take a look at those roots. That kind of gives it away that it's a sort of an ungrecum type of orchid. Flowers look wild, they're spidery, and at first I thought I had some pest here, but it's not. I know what this is, I had it on my orchids as well, it's from cold water. And right now in Poland, I think it's really cold. So he's okay, he looks okay. Next, an orchid that really looks like a Dendrobium phalaenopsis, but it's not. It's Dendrobium venustum. I always wanted this guy. You have a picture on the screen. And he is, again, a near flowering size orchid. I didn't only get seedlings, you'll see. Uh, but yeah, I really wanted to have this guy and he's looking quite okay. Next, this is Dendrobium tetragonum variety uh, giganteum. I think this is sold as near flowering size, but I don't think so. I think it's a seedling. I don't really remember. But yeah, it will take a while until it reaches maturity. But again, the flower looks really beautiful and wild. And right now, I do have the patience to wait. And I really hope that my warm environment and sunny environment will actually help them grow faster. And this is another Arrhenius. I'm so sad that my Arrhenius was mistreated that I got another one. <laughs> it's the Arrhenius biloba. And take a look at the root tips. They're orange. They're really, really pretty. Again, I know this was near flowering size. She's not mature yet. But don't worry. I think this is the last of the near flowering sized ones. Now let's take a look at the mature orchids. And there we go, that's more like it. Oh, this looks gorgeous. This is the Brassavola glauca. Yes, Brassavolas. So I have two growths here maturing. One has a sheath, which makes me reconsider potting or repotting at this point. It doesn't look like it's extremely established somehow. This medium looks pretty old. I'm so, so tempted to repot, but I'm also so tempted to wait and see what happens with this sheath, but I think I will repot. I'll go with my instinct and just repot. But this orchid is a beautiful, beautiful white, of course, Brassavola, but it's a fleshy flower. It's a big flower, not the flimsy, fluffy Brassavola type flowers. And of course, it is fragrant in the nighttime. It's a pretty famous orchid, and of course I needed to have it. Next one on the list, though, is the Digbiana. Next, I think you should all recognize this. It's another Phalaenopsis. I told you guys I'm ordering Phalaenopsis. It's the Leodoro. Yes, I had the Leodoro in the past. She's actually dying at this moment, not because of Fusarium, but because of the spider mite treatments. I'm happy to say I am well on top of spider mites. I think I'm rid of them, at least for the main part, but my Leodoro served as a guinea pig and she is now suffering the consequence until I figured out a treatment for spider mites. And I figured it out and it's quite easy. If I'm gonna say how I got rid of them on YouTube, probably everybody will be like, oh, you're no orchid grower, but you know me, I try alternative stuff. But when I'm sure that the treatment works and that I'm not killing my orchids, I'll let you know how I got rid of them. You will be surprised. But anyway, uh, this is the Leodoro. I decided to order myself another one. The price was really good for this one. Take a look at it, she's beautiful. And yeah, this is the replacement for my old Leodoro. It came with a flower spike, but I'm pretty sure the flowers will fall. Take a look at this. See, the pollen has fallen. This orchid is so prone to fallen pollen, it's amazing. I always tend to lose the pollen on my Leodoro. Next, yes, another Phalaenopsis. This is Phalaenopsis speciosa. If you don't know what this is, it might be a Tetraspis C1. I'm still not sure what the difference between Tetraspis C1 and Speciosa is. I had two Tetraspises until they figure it out. These orchids just look identical, so it doesn't matter to me. And you might know that I lost already two Tetraspis due to stem rot, so I hope I will not lose this. But one of the leaves is yellowing. It's a bottom leaf, it's okay. But this gives me the heebie-jeebies because I lost two of them already due to a stem infection. I don't think it's the case, I'm just very scared right now, but this looks gorgeous. Has two flower spikes, one is branching, one of them is actually growing, you can see here. So please, do not die on me, because if you do, my self-esteem will be on the floor. I'm not done, here's a Vanda. <laughs> so, this is a Vanda Mariane. It's a cross between Denisoniana and Tricolor. Ha! Ah, both of them were on my wish list. I have the Denisoniana, I don't have the Tricolor. Variety Suavis is the one that I want. 
uh, but it's just so expensive to buy it as something else rather than a seedling. And I found this one, which is near flowering size. It's not fully mature, but it's definitely not a seedling. It looks amazing. And I'm actually gonna try to build a sort of a basket for this one, a wooden basket. There are some tutorials on YouTube and on the internet, so I'm gonna try my hand on some DIY. It will look awful, but I will try it. But yeah, here's the orchid, looks lovely. Now here's a big guy. Yes, it's a catacetum that's making a mess on the floor. This is catacetum piliatum, which was on my wish list, crossed with Pierre Couret. No, scratch that. It's piliatum Pierre Couret, which is a red variety, crossed with expansum. Vanda, don't fall. I'm not sure how the flowers will look like on this guy. Nobody's really sure. They can be rather red or rather pink and this tag will not go back. So it's gonna be a surprise. I do not see any flower spike on this guy, Sally. He's not very stable because he's tall, but I think I see a new growth. Is this a new growth? Are you serious right now? No dormancy? You sure? Well, alrighty then. If this is a new growth and it starts to produce roots, repotted you shall be. And here is another big fella. I don't know how to display these orchids. They are not stable, obviously, because they are so heavy, so I cannot place them somewhere. This is another catacetum type orchid. It's the Cygnotus Jumbo Puff Taiyung. The Jumbo Puff was on my wish list. I got him. He's good. And I, ooh, I think this is a flower spike developing here. I was not in frame. Do you see that little bump? I think it's a flower spike. This is how it happens on my Cygnotus Wine Delight. And as far as I know, uh, he creates flower spikes from somewhere along the cane, unlike the Millennium Magic, which usually tends to produce spikes from the bottom. So yeah, I think it's a flower spike. And if I can find a way to stabilize him, it shall be a nice display. But yeah, take a look at that. Make it three flower spikes, I think. And this has been my order. I am quite happy with the orchids. Being that it's the first time that I order from this nursery, I was a little nervous. But I watched your videos with your orchid hauls from this nursery, particularly Rachel and Orchid Dude. So thank you so much for doing the videos. I really liked what you guys received. I'm very okay with what I received. I got a lot of seedlings, but they look quite well. And as an impression, I had quite a nice conversation with Justina, which owns the nursery. And she was very fast and very helpful. I also really, really like that I can choose the method of transport because I can choose from normal postage to EMS and even TNT. So that's quite a lot of options. I also like the selection. There are orchids I never seen before. So the only one, the only orchid which had some trouble from the ones that I ordered is this catacetum which is starting to go in its dormancy already and of course the flower spike did not make the transport but yeah this is what happens on transport with catacetum though i have a tip for you guys purchase them preferably in autumn winter or very early spring because late spring and summertime is their season of growth and if anything happens in transport which kind of happens sometimes if they're not in full growth mode your catacetums will not be affected this guy right now will go into its dormancy will lose flowers everything will be okay i will cut the flower spike the other ones i will let them go and see if they bloom because they really look quite nice but yeah imagine if this guy was in full growth right now it wouldn't have him that good but since he's gonna go dormant he's gonna be just fine so okay guys thank you for watching my hope hope you enjoyed it you have the links below to this nursery if you're interested and you can learn more you can see what variety they have and i'm really really happy to make finally a haul and i'm really excited to watch these orchids grow discover them together so let me know in a comment below which one is your favorite which one are you looking for the most to learning about and just see how it does so okay guys don't forget to rate this video with a like if you've enjoyed it or a dislike if you didn't subscribe to my channel for daily orchid and plant videos and thank you again for watching. I'll see you all next time. Bye. Okay, witchcraft. You and me, we need to talk. Why you make no bloom? Why you no bloom? Francis Fox make bloom. Hawaiian Splash Leia will make bloom. Brasavola make bloom. Dragon Cat is at least trying. Why can't you be like your cousin? So why you make no bloom for me, huh? Why?